Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Today we are going to be showcasing one of the new cards that came to Arena in a historic token stack. So the Eldraine's Alchemy drop came out largely. It's more flavor than power. Uh, and we recently had the nerf of Bowmaster and the One Ring. So I'm interested to see what the historic format's all about. And we got actually one really cool card in Dedicated Dollmaker. This is a two mana 2-2. Two, two. When it enters the battlefield, you exile up to one other target non-land, non-permanent, uh, non-token permanent. Uh, and then its controller creates a copy of it, except it's not legendary, so it removes legendary text, and it becomes an artifact in addition to its other types. So kind of the combo here is you target your three blind mice with the doll maker. It makes a token the three blind mice becomes a token, and then the next turn you create a token copy of the token copy of three blind mice and then each turn you get exponentially more mice and each turn you kind of get more tokens the the older sagas eventually cascade through then you get a big power boost and vigilance and kind of go from there there's also kind of the combo kill if you have a lot of creatures you can just meat hook your own board for one and then drain them out that way there um, so otherwise we're playing it in a black white tokens build so we have things like legions landing intangible virtues to give a buff Flowering of the White Tree to give a buff. We have Shadow Summoning as well as Lingering Souls, both of which make tokens that have flying, flying spirits. Notably, this makes two tapped flying spirits, um, but still a decent rate for flyers. Uh, we have Reasonable uh, Removal in the form of Pylon and Fatal Push. Uh, lingering Souls can also be flashback for some utility. Three Blind Mice, as mentioned, Wedding Announcement, just goes wide, another Anthem effect, can provide some card advantage. Uh, and then a card I want to try out as a one of is Dawn of the New Age. It's another Lord of the Rings card. Enters the battlefield with a hope counter on it for each creature you control. At the beginning of your end step, you remove a hope counter if you do draw a card. Then if there's no hope, uh, you sacrifice it and gain four life. Um, I've seen some lists play up to four of these. This card is not that good in the early game. You really need to have an established board and then it kind of refills. So I think just playing a one of could be reasonable. I also wasted all my Mythic Wild cards on Sahili Ray because I realized I kind of mixed up some effects. I'm, technically, you can go infinite with dedicated Dollmaker, Sahili Rai, and then Reckless Fireweaver to ping them, but I thought it was a two card combo that you keep blinking, but you can't make copies of the copies. So it doesn't work uh, in that sense. A um, couple kind of cool cards in the mana base uh, we have Minus Tirith. Uh, normally a tapped because we don't have legendaries in the deck, but for two mana, if we attack with two or more creatures, we get to draw a card. We also have the Silent Clearing for card advantages, as well as the Myrex. Um, one card we may want to consider is Skrull's Hive, but we're going to give this one a shot. I was fooling around with another version of the deck, uh, Boros version. This was Showdown of the Skulls earlier, but I kind of took it out. I went 5-0 and with this one here. And it's, I just want to cast Season Pyromancer again, Esper Sentinel, but this version here is just trying to gain a bunch of life with a Johnny's Welcome kind of mixed into there. Somehow pulled off the 5-0. Um, don't know how, but we did it. So I'm interested to see how this token build. Um, we're going to skip the uh, meta breakdown for this week, given that this set literally came out yesterday uh, and there is nerfs. And now Arena is just straight up dead. Um, so we'll skip it this week. I have Explorer coming out. I am going to be doing these sideboard guides over the weekend for some of the standard decks. So if there is something you want to see there, let me know. And we can kind of go from there and let's see if we could get Arena to load. Ever since Wilds of Drain, like so many connect to server issues, it's been insane. So let's see if we get going. All right, so let's play some historic. Really what I want to see is where the meta's at. Um, it helps to kind of, I expect wizards to still be very popular. We'll see how many games we could get in. I also don't know if it was accidental, but they grayscaled all their background images. And I think they actually look really sweet, like with the color overlay. Uh, it's probably a bug, but it looks cool. Uh, we go first. I think this hand's reasonable. We'll lead on this. So no companion, so likely not wizards. That's likely dredge then. Yeah. 
to otherworldly gaze. So technically you should cast this during your turn because while unlikely in your first turn, you could hit um, Creeping Chill and Silver Smoke Ghoul. That would allow you to cut back. The Ghoul only comes back on your turn. So opponent's going to get some value here. We do have Pylon as well. Probably should have just shocked there. We end up taking a little bit more damage than needed. Fine here. The nice thing is Pylon with Vigilance. This is Sultai version, so they don't really have any removal spells. So a bit of strange attack with Narcamoeba. They foregoed having a flying blocker. A nice, no creeping chill. They do have Driven Despair, which will give creatures menace. So I think here we go another Lingering Souls. And I think we're just going to try to get them dead. Because with White Tree, it's lethal next turn. Also, the more damage we put on them with Mana Confluence, the better. They could go Driven Despair. I don't really care about the discard. Fortunately, with Pylon, none of these are black. But uh, Virtue is just a hell of a card. I played so many Lingering Souls when it was standard legal. It was one of my favorite cards back then. Opponent's draw was a little... It wasn't the best dredge. They milled 20, didn't hit a Creeping Chill. Only got one Amalgam. They definitely can have better draws, but we pretty much bricked them at that point. Um, I think this is fine. So this is going to be a Jengantha. This will be Wizards. So I'm not thrilled about having two Godless Shrines. Just going to get rid of that now. A little unfortunate that... I don't really have a play on two, don't really want to do this. And with Dreadhorde, it's not the best value. We do have Legion's Landing, so at least it gives us something. I can Lingering Souls next turn as well. I do need to get to this Meat Hook, but the one thing with Meat Hook against Wizards, it's a turn five play, which is a little rough. Dreadhorde does have Trample. I could set up the three blinds mice going next turn, but I think with them having sage, double sage, we're definitely going lingering souls. So ding me for three here. A bit of an aggressive line. I was kind of glad they did that, <clears throat> but we're hoping that, you know, bottom, the last card's fluff, or just not a burn spell. We do need to draw some lands, like running lands would be really good now. Expressive's really good, gonna refill their hand. So Fatal Push should be good. Might have been right to wait and then hit the Arcanist, but we have Lightning here. So yeah, we're pretty much dead. Because they're going to Lightning and then Lightning again, and then I'm just too far behind. Bit unfortunate. 
because even then like they either take out my blockers or they just go face they force me to block which is like the same thing they're putting damage on the face um and then they're able to flash back expressive i think maybe if i was on the play um i could potentially but a little too far behind at that point with the without the meat hook Like, I do think between Pylon, Fatal Push, it could bridge the early game, especially if we could get set up, but that's something we want to take a look at, see how the games go. I think maybe a Johnny's Welcome over Legion's Landing might be better, because the Dollmaker isn't great early. The Welcome might just provide incidental, like, life gain. That could be useful. We'll give a, it looks like I have this in my opener, opponents goes first, and looks reasonable. Courtyard into Virtue into Mice, make a copy of the Legion token, play Flowering after, so just go fair game here. Another card we could look at is Rite of Oblivion, but I think I want to be a little bit more aggressively oriented. This is likely Dredge. They have priority. They got creeping, double creeping chill, silver smoke ghoul, prize the Malga. Really good flip for them. We saw this game where they, they hit a lot better. So they can get the blood gas back. I think. Next turn, we go three blind mice, make a mouse, which could be used as a blocker. Then make, I want to make another copy of the lifelinker. It can help with the race. Again, I think if we were on the play this game, we're a little bit better situated. This dredge matchup could be potentially difficult though. I keep one on top, which is likely going to be, if I would have to guess, a Glimpse, which is the best card that you can do, or Founding into Glimpse in hand. Blood Gas comes back. Notably, Blood Gas cannot block. So they have the Burn available. Uh, so they used two already, so they have six points of burn still left in their deck. So we need to be mindful of that in terms of math as we go through. Okay, Fatal Push is not something we see often out of this deck, so... That wasn't something I was planning on playing around. Probably should have done Wedding Announcement, because I can't really afford to block here. They're diluting their deck this much, then I probably don't have a chance. It's like Fatal Push is not a card you see in this, so it's not a card I'm ever going to play around. Notably, I'm at 10, so this has haste. Stitcher come down. I'm 
I know we're taking a chance here, but I gotta put some pressure. One less attacker, but I'm just dead to any mill of a creeping chill. Oh, they just hit Wonder. And Narc Amoeba. Then Narc Amoeba gets back things, so then we're dead. Again, when you're playing these games, it's important to kind of assess, like, did you lose to something that was your own fault, or did you just approach, like, that game there, I'm never going to play around, actually, I'm going to switch to Johnny's Welcome. I'm never going to play around Fatal Push to Dredge. I've seen, I've played 100, like, at least 100 games of Dredge, never played it. None of the lists ever play Fatal Push, so they got us on that. I do think Welcome's probably a better call. And I think for best of one, I don't really want flowering. Um, I just want the Welcomes to gain life. Because that game goes a little different if we get the second life linker. I'm able to make a copy and then I still have the most there. I can do the trade and then just start getting intangible virtues to start getting a big life linker to kind of come through, punch through, gain me some life, and then I'm in a really good spot. We have wedding announcements, stuff like that. But always important. Play your games. Realize, can you take it in a different li line? Yes or no? Uh, this hand looks decent. So this does come into play tapped, but I think the way my hand's shaping up, I want to have Fatal Push on 1, because then I'm doing this on 2. Looting. So this is probably Reanimator. Nope, oh, Dredge. Everybody and their mother's on Dredge. So here, I think I'm going to set this up, just try to get the flyers going. Make a mill four here. So we are expecting them to mill 10 next turn. They could upkeep to the other world of gaze. <clears throat> they have two amalgams in the yard. But they're not really hitting too much. I guess the amalgams come back now. Okay, we are flooding quite a bit. I do have the ability to enable Fatal Push, which is nice. And do that. And also draw a card. But I think. I think we're going to do this, enable Fatal Push. I guess they're both the same, so... Dudes sure are eager. Second push isn't too bad. Obviously not the best, but creeping chill. We needed them to just brick on a creeping chill for a turn. Um Everyone needs to chill. Get them like that. We need one of our... Yeah, we're just not drawing anything here.
results would have been good. So that comes back at its next end step. Fortunately, I'm just dead. Flooded out there a bit. We didn't get the doll maker going. Which is a little bit unfortunate. The hands without virtues are a little rough. It might be right to like early mall if you have the doll maker. But also we're just seeing a lot of dredge right now, which kind of gets around our plan. Like we could one for one a lot or chomp, but when they're getting multiple creatures a turn, it's pretty pretty unfortunate. So looks like wizards. We'll see how this matchup goes. So again, want to do this after you establish a board. In this game, because we have the meat hook earlier, we're going to be in a much better position. I also have this Johnny's Welcome that plays nicely with the Lingering Souls. Okay, so we also have... Three blind mice, which can get going. So they can use a removal spell here. But if they're using three damage on a 1-1, one, one, it's pretty good value. And like I said, we have this meat hook. We can make two tokens here. Getting some value. Let's lose. Interesting to see the creature land. So a bit of value. They did get rid of it, but I can get the Dawn and Lingering Souls going. Okay. The Virtue will be nice as well. I would like to draw. Like another Lion, so I can go Wedding Announcement Virtue. Reckless Charge. I think if we hit a land now, I am going to Meat Hook. Especially if I play out this Soul Scar Mage. So they opted to leave that in the yard. No blocks here. <laughs> Fine. Perfect. So we'll meet Hook here. That gives us a nice kind of drain. We'll get a card draw off Dawn, and then next turn we also gain four life off it. We get to follow it up with these two. While I won't get the last mode bonus, I think it's fine, and the Ajani's Welcome has buffered our life total back up to 19. And got that to hand is fine. Second meat hook, even better. So I could go Jingante here. I have the ability 
I'll also start making Myrex tokens if I'd like. But I think we're just gonna spam the board with tokens. We'll take the five from Jinganta here. I think the damage isn't really that meaningful. Three mana draw two, divination. We'll take five. I think given where my hand is and they didn't respond, we do this. Now they could soul scar, do a pump, get me that way there. Jeez. We are blood in. Okay, so we can get the mice going next turn. So it might be about blocking this turn. Probably throw a block block. Take the five from Jengantha. Because they would need double burn spell here. Okay, so they have static. Have another burn spell. So notably, they don't have instant speed in this version because they're on the Rangers package. But we won't block Soul Scar Mage here. You take him off a of land here. Okay, so let's do this. You make a, to a token. We do this, and then I also have the Myrex available. And we also have the ability to give our tokens indestructible with the last line of text here. So the welcomes have bolstered our life total quite a bit in this game. We got some card advantage with Miris that I think I like. The Dawn was pretty solid. Okay, so the Trample here could be relevant. They needed the Reckless Charge there. Not too bad, not too bad. We'll give it one more, see where we fall. Let's see if we want to do any other changes. The Welcomes have been very strong. I think having access to like the life gain is good. The concept, I think Pylon still might be too slow. We also, like Pylon was when Bowmaster was in because it produced black mana for you. Where we're just not getting that same volume. Um, there is, I still think we do it like that. Maybe just trim. I think the welcomes will pull more weight in the grand scheme of things. Skrelv's Hive might also be reasonable, but we're already kind of taking a bit of damage in the early game. But I guess Skrelv's Hive and a Johnny's Welcome offset each other, which could go well. Okay, so Zerda is Kethis combo. Let's give this a shot. 
We have Pylon to hopefully deal with it, but I don't think we really have, like, we're a fair creature deck. This deck does very well, especially on the play against us. Save Amber into Kethys. Emery, which should be GG. Because they can also... I'm just going to concede this one. We'll play a different one. There's, I'm not going to win this matchup. And their combo is very time-consuming. We'll give it a different go. My deck's not meant to beat Kethys. I don't interact well enough with them. I might give a demo of the other Boros one after this as well, just to show it. Kind of the same concept, but uh, Esper Sentinel pulls quite a bit of action in the deck. You also get Season Pyro, which draws you a lot of cards, which is also helpful. Find an opponent. Come on. Opponent, where are you? Draw. The ever exciting draw. I'll do one game of the Boros deck just to. To get a feel for it but it, i think the clients had its uh time in the sun probably showcase the oros or the uh, sahili combo as well just kind of give you an idea of what the deck can do uh we go first i actually think that's a mulligan just doesn't do much on its own. I think we're keeping this. We have the combo with the Johnny's Welcome. I'll put the One Ring back because we do need to hit lands here. But just need a land. A land, and we are pretty much golden. Mm, pass here. Again, just. Give me a land. Any land other than Den of the Bugbear. There's a, a chance to kill this, but I think it's more impactful to kill their big drops. Uh, in particular, Kiora is what I'm interested in hitting. And of course... Ah, da 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 da. 43%. Why would you hit a land? They have Nykthos and we'll go to town. Perfectly into Storm. Hopefully it whiffs, but they should at the very least. I think we're okay because like, I could kind of get the combo going next turn. They did still hit that, so they would have got Haywire Might to blow it up. But, um,. A bit frustrating there. You want to see at least win like half your deck's lands. You keep a two lander. Because at that point, like if as long as they don't hit Karn, they can do whatever they want with Kiora and stuff. Karn's the only way that kind of gets me over the top with the Haywire Might. But even then, I just need to make a single copy of it. And then the K wire might can't target both, and then you kind of go to town. Um, we could just out gain life in that case and just out pace the board. Yeah, opponent goes first. This sounds reasonable. 
And we have the combo. It's dredge, but we have portable holes here. Not dredge. Of course, it's going to be dredge with thought sees that they're just putting in stupid cards. So this might be Demir Control back on Shieldred One Ring. And just Esper Control. Probably play out this so we don't take like too much damage. I'm gonna play around make disappear here. Soren's ransom. Oh, they're tainted pact. They're tainted pact who had Thoughtseize on one. They always have Thoughtseize on one in their Tainted Pack deck. It's a hundred card it's a sixty card singleton outside of Tainted Pack and Jace. But the beauty is, you know, never not have it. Which is incredibly frustrating. So they could technically win next turn if they have Jason Hand, which my guess is they have Jason Hand. I guess we can just kill Jace in response to the draw. We're also like heavy canyon. We only play three of them. Because I actually think we're okay if we. Uh... Oh, they just. On curve, have your Teferi, have your Thoughtseize in your Singleton deck. I do think I need to Fateful Absence this, as much as it sucks. It will be able to Tainted Pact otherwise. I guess the other consideration that I probably do want now I guess we try to attack the fairy here. Gonna do this for no value, but just to have another attacker up. I, I always get tilted when I'm playing against Tainted Pact because like the odds are so not that they should find these cards because they're going to have Pact and Negation 2 against me with like Jace. I just, I know it. They could have Farewell, which is likely going to be what they have because why not? See Deluge here. I think if I could just like hit the Jace, we're okay. Her life total largely doesn't matter in this matchup. Also, drawing her portable holes here kind of sucks. I don't really do anything. I'm going to do on upkeep lightning helix. If they do want to counter, they have to counter now. Okay, 
So it is one counter we get out of the way here. Doing this now in case I draw, but it doesn't really matter. Oh, we did hit Helix. So try to hit Helix, take down to Fairy, Fairy down. So for those unfamiliar, what they do is they do Tainted Pack to basically draw out their deck, uh, hoping to get one of the Jace Wielder of Mysteries. So that might be setting up like a pact of negation, so they win that turn. Could also be setting up the Jace line, but we have no pressure in play. Ah. Ah, all right, tilt it off. You could do some cool stuff, but when your opponent's drawing better than you, it's a little hard to kind of stay in the right headspace. Uh, in any case, it's going to wrap this one up. Hope you enjoy it. Have a great one, everyone. Stay safe.